Now everybody, Cantonese cat here. I'm going to go through why I bought a share of GME today at 20.32. Also about five shares of AMC here around 4.56 as well. There's a particular reason for it. It's obviously not an investment, it's a trade. I'm not much of a trader either, but I do want to buy it to prove a point. I think we're at a confluence of support here. And I think there's a possibility where we might be bottoming right at here at this zone. I'm going to show you why that is. Now, you haven't followed my friend, the great Maspi, at Matt Hughes 13. You should. He does these really beautiful Gantt square and Gantt angles that are very, very important to look at. So basically, if, if you pull up what he's able to, to draw in terms of confluences, you can see that this week, basically, price went all the way up to hit the resistance right here in the confluence zone of this angle, as well as this line over here, got rejected here in the 60s went all the way back down and try to find support. Right now we're right at the top of this angle right here around 20.3. And so far it looks like we might be finding support. Now, is it guaranteed that it's gonna end up being support over here and not go down further? No, because there's a line over here, uh, there's actually a curve over here, maybe around like 17 or so that could potentially drop down and use that as support instead, or maybe even down here in this um, curve or line over here around 14, right? So you have a lot of these different support underneath below but you're starting to get to an area where you're having support. And I'm going to show you why I think that 20.3 may be a pretty decent confluence zone here for support here as well. Just looking at the weekly Ichimoku cloud, you can see that it did a perfect touch on the top of the Ichimoku cloud just now, um, around 19.85, price went down to 19.70 and ended up having a pretty decent bounce from that area. So that seemed to be a you know, pretty important zone of support. Another thing too is that it closed the gap that's been open from the week. It basically, the gap was going to be open at around, um, I want to say around like, yeah, like 20.20. So it closed this weekly gap, and whenever you end up closing an important weekly gap, a lot of times that can actually end up serving as support, right? It also closed a daily gap here too, both on the weekly and the daily, like this gap over here has been closed, right? It would not have been closed unless it would get to you know, 20.20. It ended up closing both the weekly and daily gap. So there's another reason why I think we might be at support and why it was fun to buy one share just to kind of prove a point. A couple other things to, to, to kind of think about. I mean, like if you're talking about going down to 17, you'd be maybe talking about going down to the bottom of the cloud over here around 17.35. That's certainly a potential support zone down here below. And it's also at a very important volume shelf over here, right? If you just look at the horizontal support zone over here, right now like we might be bouncing off of this range over here, which has a pretty important volume shelf over here too, right? There's a big giant volume shelf over here and we're kind of closing to the bottom of this volume shelf and end up bouncing from that so far from this area over here, right? Again, the next support zone is probably going to be around 17.3, which is going to be the bottom of the Ichimoku cloud as well as the top of this volume shelf over here. The couple of things that is really kind of telling me that I don't think this is just a one-time deal. I think it might end up keep on going up higher based on what I'm seeing. The reason why I say that is because some of the longer-term technicals are really starting to turn. So for example, you you kind of have like a bullish ticking kitchen cross over here um, from just this big giant green candle. Now, when it comes to the Ichimoku cloud analysis, it doesn't care whether or not it's a wick, whether or not it's a candle. It just basically calculates the period average based on what's the top price and what's the bottom price. So the top price over here around uh, 64.83 is gonna get calculated and the tank and kitchen is going to be way up here for quite some time. And the important thing that the tank and kitchen cross is whenever you have something like that happen, you might potentially precipitate a more powerful move upwards, right? And I'm not saying like so far this big giant wick right here. And again, if you look at the the can, you know, um, that I just showed you by, by the great mass B, and also look at the monthly cloud that got perfectly rejected here by the monthly cloud. That's another confluent area, right? And down here around 20, 23, I was just showing you there's a confluent area support zone down here, right? And you had a bullish cross over here. So there there is a chance for some bullish continuation that I did not think was possible. <laughs> and and it is uh, it is what it is sometimes, right? And this, this candle here along pretty high volume and it's a green candle and there's a bullish cross. So that's one thing. The other thing is if you look at the Bollinger Band, 
four to 20 month moving average. It's starting to flatten out. Like it's challenged the 20 moving average. Last time it challenged was August of 2022. And obviously it got rejected, right? When it got rejected is when it turned from a positive sloping, exhausting looking 20 month moving average all the way down, just down sloping, down sloping. It didn't even really touch it for a very long time up until I mean, recently, just this past week. Um, in the month of May, it busted through, and right now we're still about the 20 month moving average. And right now, the 20 month moving average actually starting to kind of crawl and flatten here a little bit. It had a very, very similar look as, you know, kind of like over here when it started to kind of pierce the 20 month moving average. It's kind of flattening here a little bit. I mean, by no means, I don't think it's fun to be a, a, a back holder from like the 60s and 50s. You're out of foam moving. This sucks. You know, this is no fun. But there are some positive longer term trend change that is seeing. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that this is an investment. Their business model is absolutely not good. And I do not want you to think that like this is something that you should be buying for like the long term. No, absolutely not. Right. But I do think that we might be at an inflection point that is, you know, potentially enough for me to kind of get off my chair and kind of pay attention to it a little bit. Um, G the GME is also a holding of IWM, so I do think that this might be a catalyst for small caps to actually rally, <laughs> as strange as it sounds. But I, I do not believe in the fundamentals of GameStop. I do not believe in the PE ratio, in the business models, or anything like that, based on everything that I'm seeing. I'm just showing you the technicals. I'm just showing you to try and prove a point by buying one share of GME. Uh, if I'm wrong, I lose 20 bucks. I'm okay with it. Anyway, um, take care. Good luck out there. Have a good one. Bye.